Hello everybody, Clint Seeley here. Um, today I'm going to record you a tutorial, something that I was playing around with. Um, my wife saw a cool, um, some cool uh, Celtic designs or Celtic, Celtic Celtic designs um, on the internet that she kind of liked and uh, wondered if I could make something and, and record a video tutorial for y'all in doing so. So I found a, uh, I found I found on one of those free sites a uh, bunch of Celtic knots and designs, and I wanted to do something for the family, and I was thinking when I saw this one that I could make some kind of family tree thing with maybe our names and a, and a monogram incorporated in it. And so I downloaded the image, and it was really low resolution, so I had to I spend some time cleaning this guy up and kicking some other stuff out of there and so now i'm i'm to a place where i could actually create something so i'll take this design and uh, post a link to the art file for your uh, for your pleasure so you can follow along so i would recommend doing that first before you start the video um and i had a few different ideas in my head and i went through a few different versions of this and found something and, and a technique that I really like that I think will be easy for y'all to follow along and you can create something really nice that you could embroider right at the house maybe hang on the wall put on a or put on um, a pillow cover or a pillow that you make might look really nice so what we'll start with is when you, you you're gonna go ahead and need to download that image and then open the embroidery software go to art canvas and import that dude right onto the art canvas. So you'll you'll be where I'm at right now, right here. So when you do that, go ahead and uh, uh, unpause me, and we'll get started. And like I like I always say, maybe you want to get yourself a hot tea or a coffee. Uh, I don't know how long this one will be. I'm gonna kind of cruise through it, but I'm not I'm not gonna go too fast for you. So knowing that we want to incorporate uh, maybe maybe um, a monogram or something like that on top of this tree I want to go play around with the monogram first so I know what else I need to do to the tree based on what the size and the dimension of the monogram is going to be okay so what here's my idea I could cut this tree in half right here um, just cut it in half and move it around and then and then do like my last name across here or I could do like an oval I could cut out an oval shape and do a monogram in the middle and then I was thinking maybe I put my name here my wife's name here and then down around here we could put the kids names um, and then maybe uh, down here established in 2010 or you know something like that that would really uh, really personalize it a lot and you could do this for yourself or a uh, family friend whatever I'm gonna walk you through the process and maybe you just sit back and enjoy and watch and then when you want to go do it yourself watch again follow along while you do it yourself so the first thing that we need to do after we've gotten this on the art canvas is we're gonna cruise on over to the embroidery canvas we are not yet we are not converting anything to embroidery we're just switching that tab over to embroidery canvas which will leave this corel draw file intact so i'm going to go to embroidery canvas and once i'm in embroidery canvas now don't worry about how big this guy is if i turn my hoop on you can see how big it is it's going to be better for us to start off with this art being big first and then when we get everything adjusted, we'll scale it and size it down to fit the embroidery hoop that we want to put it in. So don't worry about this hoop. You just hide that hoop, and we'll just look, worry about the artwork first. So I'm going to zoom in on the artwork, and I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is, I just want to do one letter, an S, in the middle of this tree. So I need to cut out part of this tree. But I need to find out, depending on what shape I'm going to use and what outline I'm going to use on that shape, I need to base that off what letter I'm actually going to use. So you might have a letter that's already done in a, uh, a font or a monogram font that you've downloaded or bought or whatever, and you can just insert that in here and start sizing it up. Now the Bernina software 
has uh, has some lettering. They have those diamond alphabets, if you remember that. They have the diamond two and the diamond three, depending on how, how many letters you want to use. Well, the diamond two only has a left and a right. The diamond three has that center letter, which is what I think I'm going to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to, no, not monogramming, sorry. I'm going to go to lettering and bring up right here the object properties box, and I'm going to select. Let's see. Let me go to, uh, there's diamond three right there. So I'm going to switch to the diamond three font, and I'm going to go to select character. When I go to select character, I can just turn on my true view and I find that S. There's that S right there, the middle S, which is what I'm going to use for this experiment. Okay, I'm going to hit apply. Okay, enter on the keyboard. We'll place it. See how small it is? That's no big deal. Just grab that guy and resize him to the size that you're going to want him to be. Okay. Now you can see it's obviously it's not going to be blue on blue probably it can be if that's what you want but I'm just and and you can if if the artwork is distracting you a little too much you can let's see you can dim the artwork right there you see how I did that you can dim the artwork and you can still kind of see the shadow of the artwork there but what I'm really looking at here is where I think I can place that S, and I'm going to kind of size it up just like that, and that's looking pretty good right there. I kind of like, I kind of like how that looks. It it seems to fit really nice, and so from there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the art canvas. I want to head back to the art canvas using the tab, clicking the tab. Okay, I'm going to head back, and my vector art's still going to be there, but a preview, a locked preview that you can't edit or touch of this S is going to be superimposed on top of it so I can then create my shape that's going to be my cutout. All right, follow me. So I'm going to go head back to the art canvas. When I head back to the art canvas, I should be seen, yes. I should be seen. I'm going to let me go to object manager here. I should be seen and I am. I can see the the preview of the embroidery is still there. Okay, so that's really nice um, to create my, oh, in this case, it's going to be an oval or you could do a, you know, you could do some kind of a diamond shape or create your own shape, whatever. I'm just going to use an oval. So I'm going to go over here to this fly out right here and find my vector ellipse tool. Okay, now I found my vector ellipse tool and I'm just going to draw an ellipse here. And don't worry, I can reshape it. I'm going to draw that ellipse and of course... It's clear, and I'm going to throw a color on it. <clears throat> I'm going to get rid of the, I'm going to get rid of the outline. So I've got a color on it, but you can see it's layered incorrectly. Um, what layer does this need to be? I got like two, two of these layers here. All right. So I just need to make sure I grab that ellipse and get it to where it needs to be. Okay. So here I've I've got it layered on top of the tree, but under the embroidery which is what you want, so everything's looking uh, to where I can actually edit it visually. And this looks pretty good. Does, does that look good to you? That looks pretty good to me. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this oval that I've just created to create like a trim stamp. So I'm going to cut out, like a cookie cutter, I'm going to cut out a portion of this tree, all right? And then I'm going to digitize both the tree and the oval that I've just created as two separate elements. So once I cut it out and I convert everything, I'm going to be able to edit separately the tree and then the oval, which I will, I'll create a background out of this oval I think would look good. Um, and then I can put a, an outline, like a satin stitch outline around that oval. And then the, uh, the, the letter's going to be there. So I think it would look lovely. So the first thing that I'm going to have to do, because you can see, let me move let me move this guy over. You can see the background of this tree is still there. So let me undo that. And visually, I'm looking at this, and it's looking all right to me. I mean, this is looking okay to me. I have no problem with this. So I'm going to make sure that I select the ellipse, and then I also select that curve, which is the tree. 
Now, when I select those two, and because they're overlapping, and you can see they're, they're, they're in the correct order, I have some editing tools right here, some trim tools, of trimming and cutting tools. And you can see if I go to trim, all right, and left click that trim, I believe some magic has just happened that you can't see yet. So let me show you. I've trimmed it, and let me re-grab this. Eh, let me grab the ellipse and move it away, and you can see I've went ahead and trimmed that out right there. And I'll just hit undo. Boom. I'll just hit undo. Now, for something like this, for something like this tree, um, when we convert this to embroidery, sometimes if it's too small, the, the program tries to do too much, and some po portions of it will be um, a uh, fill stitch, and some portions it'll try to guess what I want it to do will be a satin stitch, and usually that's never right. I like to control that after I get it into the embroidery canvas. So to make a long story short, I'm always going to, I like to grab everything that I'm going to digitize and make it a little bit bigger, okay? And don't worry about this embroidery being off over here, this, this embroidery preview. We're worrying about the vector art. I like to make it a little bit bigger, okay? Because I want to ensure when I convert this to embroidery, especially in this case, that it's all fill stitch because ideally I'm going to turn it into a satin stitch change the stitch direction and then make it a special satin like a split satin stitch and I think that'll give a really cool look like uh, like a tree like bark you know uneven surfaces the way that a tree would look so I've made this bigger than I'm going to actually embroider it for the conversion process I've made it bigger so let's see and remember you have that you have that undo button, which is the magic button, all right? So we can't mess anything up. We have that undo button. So from here, I've got just my vector arts selected. I'm going to hit convert and see what happens. And we can always go back and redo. I'm going to hit convert to embroidery. It's going to do a little bit of magic. Give it a second to think. All right. Now let me zoom out here and let's see. Yeah, pretty much everything. You know, i got one spot right here. See, you got this one spot that that converted to uh, a satin stitch and did something funky and wonky right there. So um, it's probably right on the edge. Everything else is fill stitch. I'm just going to hit undo, and it'll bring me back to Art Canvas. All right, and I'm going to hit a Control A, and you can see over here in the Object Manager, both of those pieces are still selected. I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger and see if that fixes it. All right, now I'm going to hit convert again. Yeah, so now everything's pretty much flat, and I'm pretty sure that's going to be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and grab that letter and slide it to the side for now, because I don't want to worry about that yet. Okay, that's going to be placed in a second. And if we look at our hoop, you're going to look at the hoop and go, oh my goodness, Clint, this will never fit in my hoop. Don't worry about that yet. We're not to that yet. So just hide that hoop and, and stop letting that psych you out. But you can kind of see where I'm going with this, right? Yeah. And I'm trying to. I'm just going to try to make this nice and easy on everybody. All right. So the next thing that I'm going to do is, obviously, this is not all going to end up being fill stitches. Or else we've got, oh my goodness. You're going to be embroidering this thing out all day long. Right now, as is, we're at, and you can see down here, 97,000 <laughs> stitches. Uh, raise your hand if you want to sit and watch your machine for 100,000 stitches. Ain't going to happen, okay? So we're going to see where we end up with good technique where we can end up with this embroidery. It's going to be <laughs> much lower, okay? So we're at 97,000 stitches now, but don't worry about it. Next thing I'm going to do, now you can see this oval that I've digitized as a separate color. It doesn't have to stay a separate color, but for argument's sake, inside the embroidery canvas, it's going to be easier to work with if we, if it is a, if it is a different color, that just makes it in the color film. It keeps it a separate element. You can control 100% what color of thread you put on the machine, all right? So sometimes the colors of my designs look like patchwork, but, but that's a lot of times to keep it separate elements on the color film. 
and you can see over here in the color film what I'm, what I'm talking about. So let me grab this oval. I'm going to grab this oval. It's the next thing I'm going to do. And I'm going to change this to kind of a, let's see, maybe lace work. That doesn't look bad. Okay. So let's just let's just go with a lace work. You can select an, a different back, one of these other backgrounds if you want to, if you think that's going to look better, whatever you want to do. I'm going to go with lace work. And then... I'm going to put a satin stitch outline around the perimeter of that lace work. And I'm going to do that by going to the, is it on edit? Yeah, edit. And then we're going to go to outlines and offsets, bring up that offset. And for this one, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do offset outlines right here instead of the object outlines, offset app outlines there. And then I think maybe just a, a point two. A point two is going to be, uh, a little much on on the offset, so we're gonna do more like a uh, let me see a point o maybe point o two, and we're gonna do an offset count of just the one and the type. Let's let's drop that down and do a satin line, okay? And it's gonna come in at white. We could change the color if we wanted to. Um, let's just change the color to that bright blue. And that'll keep it, it'll look nice, but it'll keep it, again, a separate element. And I'm going to hit OK, see what happens. OK, I kind of like how that looks. All right. Now we are starting to cook with some gas right here. This looks like something, don't you think? Yeah. OK, so now from here, we still don't want everything to be a fill stitch. So I'm going to click the bottom half of this tree. And let's go make that uh, satin fill. All right, satin fill, and then let's go to the reshape, all right, mode, left click here and reshape, and you can see when we hit reshape, we can look at the stitch angle, and we actually have a handlebar. Right now it's 45 degrees, so I'm going to mouse over that 45 degrees, click and grab it, and I'm just going to move it on up to zero degree angle, and once I do that, I'm then going to go into the object properties of that satin, stitch and make it a satin special okay we can make it a satin special and then we can also change the spacing here if we need to but let me go ahead and make that change and now we can look at what we got okay there's some texture there but it's also a split satin stitch so the final product i think looks really good <clears throat> now we've got to do the same thing with this little piece right here so let's make that guy a satin Let's go to reshape. Okay. We'll grab that handlebar of the angle handlebar. Get it back up to a zero. Yeah. And then we're going to right click here and make that guy a satin special so she matches up. Okay. So the bottom half of the tree trunk is done. Looking good. Looking good. Now let's do the top part. And we probably have a couple different elements here on the top part, which is fine. Let's go ahead and make that guy a satin. Boom. And you can see we'll have to do this one here, and we'll have to do this element here and that element there. That's fine. Okay, so the main chunk of this we've now turned to a satin. We're, of course, going to go to reshape, grab that angle handlebar, bring that guy up to zero, and you don't have to do the same exact angle I do. It's just what I like for this one. And then we're going to make this guy satin special. Hit apply and OK. Boom. Now we are cooking with gas. We're starting to look like something here. All right, let me go get these last couple right here. I'm going to make you a satin. OK. And that could probably just stay a satin. Uh, get this guy. And let me get this guy, okay? And you can go back in here and make these. We probably want these to. We want these to match up, okay? We'll make these satin specials, and we'll change the. Uh, we'll change those handlebars too. Uh, and like I say, you don't have to make them all uh, zero degrees. That's just what I'm doing, okay? So that looks really good. That's looking really nice right there. Let's let's grab this guy, and make him a satin special, 
Everything's cook. We are really cooking with some gas here. And we haven't gotten too complicated yet, have we? No, we haven't. <clears throat> so now we got a tree that's looking really good. It's a purple tree. Maybe that's not the color you're going to go with. So you, I mean, you can change the color of the tree. I'm going to do, I'm going to do all of that at the end to get the colors down. I'll do all of that at the end. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is let's go ahead and resize this thing. And we can do this visually based on the hoop that you're going to put it in. So now we'll put the hoop up. All right. We'll put that hoop up and I'm going to select the part of the design that I want to reshape. All right. Boom. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that guy down quite a bit and see what happens. And we'll just move him right back into the center of that hoop. <clears throat> Come on. He's going to jog him over because of, uh, well, <laughs> because of this letter right here. So let me go, I'm going to go ahead and size this letter down and get him on the inside. And you can see that letter right there is underneath now the design. So we'll just go to the color film and move him all the way to the end. Oops, go down. There we go. There we go. And now this letter's on top. And we'll go ahead and make this guy this letter. We're going to go ahead and stretch him to the size we're going to want him to be. A little wider there. Come down just a little bit. Looking good in the neighborhood. And now we can select, we can do a control A, select everything, and we can resize it. Now you can see this is fitting inside this hoop, okay? It's fitting inside the hoop, and that's nice. Look, I missed a spot right there. I'll just go ahead and turn that guy to a satin stitch. Now he looks good. And now that you, we've got a design that's looking pretty sharp right here, and it's fitting. So I'm going to get rid of that hoop again because I just like designing without that hoop sticking in my face. Now, at this point, we could we could add some text. Maybe this is where you want to stop and you think this looks good and that's great. But I'm going to show you how to, uh, how to spice this up just a little bit with a little text. So we're going to go to Digitize. And let's go to Lettering. And we'll bring up that Properties box. And it's still in Diamond. Don't forget, it's still in Diamond. And from here, I might want to, I'm going to write my name and then my wife's name, uh, maybe in some type of a script like it, maybe an anniversary. All right, so we'll do Clint, and that's half an inch, and I can resize that. Let me place that guy. Maybe you do it. my Clint right there. Size him down a little bit, get him sized down. And of course, before you go embroidering this, You can use and you can bring up the <clears throat> the graph right here, so you you can make sure everything's lined up just right. And this will probably be a different color, so I'm going to make that a different element. I'm just going to turn that guy maybe a brown right there, because I think that letter's going to in the middle's going to end up being brown, and this might end up being brown. I might start I might start doing a little bit of this coloring now here. All right. Looking good. Everything's looking, starting to look good. And with this Clint, I'm going to put a Caitlin over here. So I'm just going to Control D and duplicate what I just did. And then drag over the duplicate and double click on it and start typing in Caitlin. All right. And I'll hit apply. OK. And you can see that Caitlin ran just a little bit long, but I can move, I can jog this Miss Caitlin up just a little bit. Kind of like how that looks. And because that, you know, they're both the same size. Is that looking good? I think that's looking pretty good right there. And then maybe I want to put my kids at the bottom. But maybe I want to do the contour right here of the tree trunk. And I can do all of that. That's fine. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go back to the lettering tool. And I'm going to type in, let's see, Sonia Kate. And then maybe a space and a space and put Hazel May. Maybe a Hazel May. I'm not going to do those. I don't think I'm going to do those in a in the same anniversary font. Maybe they're because it's going to be longer and it's going to be curved. 
Maybe I need to find one of those small fonts. Okay, so let's let's go and find a look. We got that Helvetica small might be a good one. Okay, so let's do the Helvetica small. I'm gonna hit apply. Okay, and then I'll just place that guy. Now look how big this is. All right, let's get it in the middle and we'll start editing this. This is the starting point. So I'm gonna double click just to bring up those bring back up those object properties. And this is a uh, half an inch high. This is a small spot, small font, so I could do like a 0.25. Let's let's go on down to 0.25 and see where we're at. And then we can also do an auto kerning or a letter spacing. Let me hit auto kerning and see what happens. Not much. So I'm going to manually take control of this letter spacing because I can bring those letters a little bit closer to each other. Hit apply. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Now let's see. Let me line this guy up. And that looks pretty good, but could we do a little curvature on it? We could. Let's see how that looks. And I'm going to put these in that same brown. Yeah, that same brown matching the rest of us. Let's bring that up, and then we can change the baseline right here. We can change the baseline, the circle. Now you can see this baseline, circle CW, is uh, you would be doing the curvature on the top of a circle, and here you would be doing the uh, circle CCW, which is going to be that curvature under, and that, that visual preview is great for that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that guy right there. Baseline radius. Um, let's just do a, an even 2.0 inches and hit apply and see what happens. Okay, so I've, I've hit a, a, a curvature of 2 inches, and it doesn't line up perfect, does it? It doesn't line up perfect, so I could bring those object properties back up, and maybe I do 2.5 inches, and let's see what happens. 2.5 inches, that's looking a little bit better, okay? Maintaining the curvature of the design right there, kind of... I kind of like how that looks right there. I think that's looking pretty good right there. Okay, and then I could I could put, I have room in that hoop, of course. I could put established in 2010, 2010. Uh, you could put some dates down there, some more verbiage, information, whatever you want to do. But I think that's looking pretty good. I think, I think this could definitely give you some ideas uh, of course, at the end, we you want you all want to do the normal tidying up and the the underlays and the push and pull compensations for, um, of course, the fabric that you're going to put this design on. Okay, you need to keep that consideration in mind. But you can see now we're at only nine, almost twenty thousand stitches. That's something that you could do on your machine. Okay, and it wouldn't take up a ton of your time. Let's look at. Let's see. Let's look at recoloring. And what do we've got here? We've got, I'm just going to hit the paint bucket and find a color swatch that I like. And I like maybe this green. Okay. Left click and start coloring some of this green. Kind of like the way that looks. And, you know, of course, can I get to that? There. Now that that's looking pretty sharp, I must say. And then you can you also want to change the background, okay? The background that you're working on, it needs to be similar to the the color of the fabric that you're intending to put this on, so you get a better preview. And I can go to uh, what design background, and maybe I'm putting this on a white pillow. So we want to go ahead and change that. And now you have a a much better idea of what this would be looking like, okay? I think it looks great, don't you? Very nice. Hopefully, this tutorial will give you something to make and play play with and share your designs or whatever you came up with. Please share those online on our Facebook group, the the Bernina uh, Digitizing Group. And I I uh, if you have any questions, just ask me some questions on that group. But I hope this tutorial was helpful. This is Clint Sealy. Thank you for watching.